everyone, you're watching Build Series in New York City. I'm Laura Moraski with our next guests, Michelle Prada and Melissa Barrera. They lead the cast of the new star series, Vida, which follows two Mexican-American sisters from the east side of Los Angeles who couldn't be more different from each other. Things get turned upside down, though, when they face the surprising truth about their mom's identity. Take a look. Emma, this Hi, is Eddie. Eddie. She helped mommy run the bar and was like her roommate. Vidalia had a roommate. Emma, after we bury mommy, we can both go back to not talking, but for today, just please. How much longer do we have to do this? I'm real sorry about your mom. Come on, you came here looking to see me. <laughs> I came because Eddie's wife just died. Her what? How long? Full on married? Just two years. What a hypocrite. Why a hypocrite? You always lie. We have to split the building three ways. I'm not selling. You keep on seeing I have a life back in Chicago. Do you want to run a bar? Keep on I think you're the most beautiful thing in the world, but I can't. <laughs> Rich assholes are colonizing our hood. It's not right. We gon' take it back. We gon' take it back. Get out of our neighborhood, you white thina bitches. Ever since your mother turned, you know, people have stopped going to the bar. You know what? Fuck her. We'll have to stay a little longer until we figure out what we're going to do for Vida. Please welcome Michelle and Melissa to the stage. Ladies, thanks so much for stopping by Bill today. Thank for you. having us. Yeah, congratulations on this new series. It's cool to see you off camera because you guys are really good friends, but on the series as sisters, you don't you're not so friendly, at least at the start of it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like a regular sister relationship. You know you love each other, but you hate each other. Yeah. And at the beginning, these sisters are have been estranged for a while and they have different philosophies of life, and so they butt heads a lot. And then they're thrust back into you know the same place because of the the death of their mom essentially right yeah yeah and to face the past that both of them uh, feel that they've left behind but you know the past isn't really something we can leave behind that easily so they're forced to kind of accept that part of them and who they are in reality because yeah. they're trying to run away from their roots and their culture and and their home and all the people that surrounded them when they were growing mm -hmm. up and now they have to come home and face that. I think so many people can feel and understand that part of it. Um, yeah. Just having to go back home to wherever you grew up and you know, it feels different, it seems different. And in this case, it is different. I think there's, the neighborhood is changing and yeah. I think that plays a big role in the series, right? Yeah, um, the neighborhood, uh, East LA is a, a big character in the show and it's very important to, to shed light on what is happening. That's um, gentrification, the neighborhood is changing, people are being thrown out to make room for new buildings and more expensive houses and, and it's sad and that is a reality that's happening and, and Emma and Lynn coming home become hentifiers, yep. which is like they become displacers of their own people because they have this power now that they inherited a building and a bar mm -hmm. and they have all these predators and developers that want it, so they have a choice. Yeah. And I think at this point they've felt a bit disconnected um, and, f like I said, feel like they've left something behind. So it's easy to just kind of get rid of it and move past that. But it's not something that, that's that easy because I think they start kind of really getting back in touch, for better or for worse, with the things that they've left behind. Sure. And it also talks a lot about gender, too, which I think um, is very important. How, how does that play into the series as we, as we see it progress? It's incredibly important. Uh, I mean, even behind the camera, um, we had a lot of uh, just different types of representation, uh, you know, queer, brown, Latinx, all different types. And uh, we have trans male representation as well that we, you know, we don't have as m enough trans representation, but specifically trans male representation is something that we see very little of. Yeah. And then you kind of splinter it even into the Latinx, brown representation of queerness and then you're kind of fighting with even a smaller piece of that pie. So I think that that's something that's really beautiful that we get to explore in just throughout our neighborhoods and throughout our culture uh, to see what the effects of that are. 
I feel like this is something that we're not seeing that much on television these days. Um, would you agree with that? Yeah, I think uh, uh, especially the Latinx community has been underrepresented mm -hmm. in mainstream media. We are usually um, depicted as criminals or uh, the sexy, you know, voluptuous Latina. Or we're stereotyped. And we, in, in this case, we're giving the chance to demonstrate all the different, like, colors and types and shapes and sizes that Latinos come in. And it's really beautiful to see us just depicted as human beings, yep. which we are, and we get to just tell the story of Americans that are trying to survive and are trying to mend broken relationships mm -hmm. and are trying to figure out where they fit in in this world, in this community, in their family, which is basically what everyone is trying to figure out yep. in life. So I think it's, it's a, a universal story in the sense that every person will be able to see themselves a little bit no matter where they come from or where they grew up or the heritage that they have, they'll be able to see a little bit of themselves in these girls and in the, in the rest of the characters. Yeah, and a story of acceptance, mm -hmm. accepting uh, what is and then what do you do with that. And I think you see that with the neighborhood and then also interior emotionally with them and how difficult that really is because both of these girls aren't perfect. Sure. They're fiercely imperfect and have so many wonderful qualities, but so many just as wonderful not qualities, not wonderful yeah. qualities, yeah. <laughs> just as wonderfully unwonderful yeah. qualities. Yeah. So there's something I think really important also for us to see that, to see women that can succeed and can you know do what they need to do, but are still figuring it out. Yeah, so relatable on many levels, and I like that it's it's that way. You know, you mentioned earlier about the diversity uh, on obviously on screen, but I know that there was a lot of diversity off screen too. And you know, female showrunner, and how did that kind of make it more authentic to have the Latinx community sort of per pervasive on and off screen? Made all the difference. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like that's why it seems like it's so real and so true to these stories and to these characters and to even like the way that we that we speak is authentic and having an all Latinx writers room helped in doing that because what you see on screen is also what's happening behind the cameras mm -hmm. and that is there's like a cultural shorthand of like no one has to explain anything to anyone it's just everyone knows it because that's where they come from and it's the story that's close to everyone's hearts it's not like I don't want to like it's not like a white person trying to tell a story of uh, uh, a Latino or or, or a, a white you know? uh, writers room with one Latino being yeah. like, and because we're all so different. I mean, we're both Latino, but we're different. I mean, yeah. we grew up very, very different. We might as well like we have like a similar, I think, bloodline. Yeah. But our experiences are really different, totally. but we can still come together and still relate to each other. And I think that that's what's really important because then you create characters that are nuanced and characters that are rich and three dimensional rather than just like painting it with one broad stroke and being like, this is all the same. Sure. I mean, I think it comes through on the show while watching it, the authenticity of it all. For each of you, uh, we can start with you. What, what part of your character can you relate to uh, the most or of the show itself? I would say there's a part of me, uh, I grew up in Miami, Hialeah specifically, that when I go home, I, lo I love my family and I love that I'm from there. But sometimes I'm just like, how are you guys still doing this like this? Like, just buy a new extension cord. Don't <laughs> tape up the old one. This is a hazard. Yeah. And I don't feel that way in my normal life. But then when I go home, I, I feel that way. And then also uh, feeling like an adult and then going home and getting into fights with your mom and your brother and sister like you're 12 again yep. and being like, oh, gosh, OK, no, I'm an adult now. <laughs> like, stop <laughs> doing this. So I feel like I can relate to that with Emma a lot. Yeah. What about you with your character? Ah, uh, uh, Lynn is complicated. Yeah. But I feel like every person has been through a Lynn stage at some point in their life. I know that I, I used to be like Lynn in the sense that I was afraid to not be liked by people. Like I, I felt the need to be liked and loved by everyone mm -hmm. because you're not taught as a little girl that it's okay if people don't like you. you you're taught to like suck up to people and be like, oh, I wanna look pretty for you and I want people to tell me that I'm beautiful and that's all, and that's all my value, you know? It's a, it's a thing that we have ingrained. It's like a cultural 
norm and societal norms even that we think we treat little girls as if their only value is their beauty and and for the longest time I, I used to think that if that I had to be pretty for boys to like me and and if I didn't have a boyfriend that meant that there was something wrong with me and I think that Lynn doesn't know how to be by herself she's constantly looking for an anchor because she doesn't know who she is and she and her only value is what other people see in her. Mm -hmm. And we see her her romance sort of play out with yeah. the ex, at least in the first couple episodes. Yeah, uh, with the old flame. And you'll see more in, like, the stories develop with the characters that they encounter. Emma with Cruz and Lynn with Johnny, with, like, the boomerangs, you know, that you can't, you can't yes. escape, you know? There's this, the thing of the first love that you, you don't know. It's unexplainable, but it's always there. Yep, we all have those boomerangs. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh. oh, you can't shake them, you can't yeah. shake them. Uh, but for you, when you first read the script, or you know, whether it was the audition process, what was your first reaction when you first saw this uh, it came to you? I couldn't believe that it was happening. I remember when it was announced that it was happening uh -huh. and I was so excited and I never in a million years thought that I would get to play one of the sisters. But just hearing that it was happening gave me so much hope and so much excitement um, because I, for the longest time I hadn't seen somebody that was like me. My parents are immigrants. I grew up in a heavily um, Latino community mm -hmm. and yet I'm American and I speak English, and I speak Spanish, and it just, I had never seen anything, and I always felt that, that I wanted to see something that was like the type of Latino that I was. Mm -hmm. And it was honestly one of the first times I'd ever even heard of it, and then seen it, and then getting to bring it to life was just, I'm still pinching myself, it's oh, really amazing. That's awesome, what about you, Melissa? I, um I knew about Tanya. I knew I knew her plays. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, one of my roommates when I was at NYU did one of Ta one of Tanya's plays off Broadway, Fade. And I remember reading the play because I was helping uh, my roommate um, rehearse, and I could just feel how real it like reading it it felt like I connected with it even though it wasn't mentioning anything about being a Latina it's just, it was just the voice was so authentic and it drew me in and then when I saw I saw the breakdown for the characters when they opened like the audition process I was like I have to be a part of this ah. and I put myself on tape for Lynn and next thing I know I was called in and I met Tanya and I met Carmen Cuba and then just went on from there. And here we are. Yeah, and here <laughs> we are at Bill talking to you just a couple yeah. weeks before the premiere. Are you anxious yes. for it? Are oh you my excited? God. Oh God. Yeah, I'm so anxious. I can't, I. I know, we like got so like. Ooh. Longest time, because we finished shooting. In December. 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 So it feels like it's been a long time coming. Yeah. And, and we've gotten to see a few of the episodes and we're excited. We think we have something really different mm -hmm. and really, um, Heartfelt. Beautiful, yeah. yeah. Heartfelt, Just, beautiful, and authentic in a yeah. way that I haven't seen before. Yeah. Yeah. You watch a lot more TV than I, I have, do so maybe you've seen it, but I haven't. But yeah, yeah. we're just like so excited for people to see it. Yeah, yeah. And just hopefully get season two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. I was wondering if there's so six episodes, right, of the first season. Yeah. So it's like it's small, but it's like it's it's, sh it's short and yep. sweet. You yep. should think about it because it's six episodes. They're only half hour. Yeah. So it's basically like watching a three hour movie if you binge it. Yeah. yeah. It's like like the Titanic. Yeah. It don't, yeah. Like the Titanic. But like but in the hood. Yeah, but yeah. In the hood. <laughs> um, it's very it's it's like goes by like water it's and, it, and you should think about it as like a three-hour pilot basically got it so like warming it. you up into the world yeah, and letting you in on very, who these women are yeah it's very character based so um the biggest thing that happens is our mom dies and that's within the first few minutes of the show yeah so a lot of it is just kind of the effects of it and the come down and then these slight character changes um which is also a dream as a latina actress we don't really get to play those type of roles. So yeah. that's, uh, yeah, so that's good. That's <laughs> yeah. exciting. Uh, I know it premiered a little bit at, at South by Southwest earlier this year. What was, yeah. that, was that fun to be a part of that process? Oh my God, so much fun. But it was also awful because yeah. <laughs> we hadn't seen the hadn't first seen episode. It. Oh. So we got to see it for the first time with like a bunch of people in a huge theater and like a huge th screen. And like, and then I had to know. talk about it right afterwards. Yeah. We were just like, and we were in shock. Whoa. Yeah. And then they're like, so talk to us. And I was like, 
Yeah. <laughs> it was, I'm just taking it all It in. was a lot, yeah. yeah, but it was special. And we won the audience award, which oh, is also congratulations. amazing. So, yeah. yeah, and surprising. And it just validated the fact that we're doing this with, like, as a love letter to the Latinx mm -hmm. community and with so much love and so much passion. We're all, like, so invested in, this, in these stories. And to have people, like, watch it and like it is the best thing that could ever happen. Yeah, and I think also with it being, uh, you know, a full Latinx writer's room and all this, we get to make fun of ourselves a yeah. little bit too and laugh and kind of just be like, oh yeah, I know that, we all do that. So yeah. it's it's kind of, that's, that's also, I think, an extra thing that we get to do. What was it like on set? Was it fun? Was it, uh, you know, were you joking around? Oh yeah, it so much really fun. fun. It got to the point where I would be like, if I was shooting and Michelle was not, yeah. Shooting that day, I'd be like, can you come, please? And yeah, just, like, and I totally out. was, like, coming to set. And they're like, are you shooting today? I was like, no, I just was yeah. going to get a coffee. And We um... wanted to be <laughs> on set all day, every day, because it was so much fun. Oh. And we had also the best snacks on there. Oh, yeah, the snacks were really we had good. Elote, that doesn't hurt. Like, and churros. And churros, elote, tacos. Raspados. Yeah, just, like, oh, delicious. Yeah. Cookies. Yeah. So good. Okay, so you mentioned earlier that you watch TV a lot. You don't watch it as much. Which shows are you watching? Oh, my God, so many. Which ones am I not watching? I'm, I'm watching New Girl. <laughs> yeah. I'm watching oh, yeah. New Girl because the final season just started, yeah. and, I, and I love, like, being able to laugh out loud yeah. with a show. Um, I'm waiting anxiously for Handmaid's Tale season yes. two. This week? Anxiously. I'm yes. So, yes. I'm so excited for that. Um, I just finished watching Will and Grace. I am, I was watching this really good Spanish show that's on Netflix called Money Heist. That, and it's really intriguing. It's like a, well, it's a heist, obviously. Duh. And with money it's called involved. La Pasada, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and one day at a time. One day at a time. Oh, like, that yes. has been that's that's fine. Latinx represent yeah. on Netflix. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just a lot. Um, what else? I, I feel like I, I watched... A lot of things. That I <laughs> just recently started watching Glow, which oh, I really oh, I was Glow. digging. Yeah, and they like, have a second season coming out soon yeah. too. Uh, so Glow, that's you. Anything yeah. else? Um, Are you keeping up with Fear the Walking Dead? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, haven't. I mean, honestly, with um, this show, it's just kind of pushed our lives into yeah. just getting getting it to you guys and to everybody, and yeah. we've been really working hard to to just make sure that as yeah. many people can experience it as possible. Oh, great. Well, we have yeah. some questions from the audience, yeah, so let's get sure. it started. Hi, thank Hi. you guys for being here. Um, so you mentioned earlier um, how much of a character-heavy show this is and character-heavy uh, story. So how do you guys kind of get into those roles and really dive in to kind of do justice to the characters? <sighs> Well, we did a lot of, I know that <laughs> I took a lot of trips to the east side of Los Angeles because I wanted to get familiar with the area and with the people and just get the feel of the place. And I immediately fell in love. And I understood why this show specifically has mm -hmm. to have East LA as a character. Because like you mentioned earlier, um, it's usually portrayed as this like unsafe place and mm -hmm. just like criminalized a lot. And you don't get to see like the beautiful side of it. And and in the show, we get to see it. It's and all the beauty its and the and chaos as well, which is kind of amazing because you can look at it and you look at, oh, those are just rundown restaurants or whatever. But then yeah. you go in and you smell the tacos and you yeah. hear the cheese man, the chatter and the gossiping yeah. and all that stuff. And it just kind of comes alive. Yeah, so. for me, it felt like like home because yeah. I moved to L.A. from Mexico City uh, almost a year ago. It'll be a year in May. So I remember just thinking that it was a, the smoothest transition I could ever have gotten because it was like being home. It felt re very familiar. Everything, the people, the vibe, the food, the language, everything. And as for like characters, I think we built our history together. Yeah, we and I know, cause I came on kind of late, um, about yeah. a week and a half before we started shooting. So for me, um, there was a lot that was really scary about Emma because uh, sh there, there are a lot of differences. So just trying to find the parts that were the same um, and then, you know, creating these shields and why these were important. And then us creating our history together was really important because even just st the, the beginning episode, you when we first see each other, it's been 10 years that have passed by. So we really needed to see that that was uh, an important part of 
of us, and that yeah. was really important. It was important for us to to establish the sister relationship with the with love as a base, even though you don't get to see it, because we didn't want to like fall into a trap of these like two characters. girls, cat yeah, or just whatever. like just fighting without like any real substance underneath. And we parted from love. We we hung out. The first time that we hung out <laughs> after a rehearsal, it was just like an immediate click, and like that turned into started at five p.m. and then we went for 10 coffee, yeah. and then the coffee place was closed, so then we went for a drink, and then at five p.m. by the at way, at five p.m. and then uh, and that, to bed at eight a.m. Yeah, the next and, I, and it ended up me getting locked out of my apartment and not Wandering being able to get in at ten a.m. But it was it was fun. We just like <laughs> it clicked. We're lucky because we get to. We get to love each other on and off screen and we get to be friends. And I feel like that is not something that's as common in the industry when you get to really love the person that you're working with so closely. And it was just easy. Yeah, that part was easy. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, who's next? Hey, right ladies. Here. Um, so I was wondering, uh, since you guys shot in East L.A., like, was that part of, um, part of L.A., like, more of a character to the show? Like, how was that able to factor into the story and your characters? Well, yeah, East LA is a really important character in the show, and we shot a little bit in East LA and a lot in other parts that looked like East LA because we wanted to be very respectful of the area, and because it's going through changes and because it's gentrification is happening, we didn't want to become that. So I think it was very important for Tanya and for Stars and for Big Beach and for all of us to be very respectful of the people and their home. Yeah, and to highlight the problem but not contribute to it. Yeah. Because um, that is important. The last thing we wanted was a Starline bus driving through Boyle Heights and being like, oh, I mean, if the show becomes a hit. Yeah. Um, being able to do that. And so the bar that the show is shot in is actually a 99 cent store. So yeah. it's all, that's production design. Yeah. Um, and then it went back to a 99 cent store after we were done shooting. And so there is no like bar you can go to and have like the Vila cocktail or anything. So yeah. that was a big part of it. Really interesting. All right, who's next? Hello, ladies. Hi. Hi. I wanted to know what pers um, what interests you into going into acting. I think I've oh I've always been like a like a closet actress since I was really young because I would like lock myself in my room and make up my own place with like my <laughs> my dolls and my stuffed animals, but I was super shy. So I think what motivated me to go into acting was watching my my classmates do school plays and like wanting to be on stage with them. And then my baby sister, she's 11 years younger than me. And she actually started acting professionally at five years old in, in theater in Mexico. And I would go with her to the theater every night and like watch her be on stage and like be a superstar. And I, and she motivated me to, Aww. to want to do it too. Yeah. I know uh, for me, I started uh, really young. I, did the a production of the little red hen in my Aww. first grade class mm. <laughs> and um but it was in spanish it was la gallina roja uh -huh. and then uh i started doing stuff in church plays and then i started performing in shopping malls and also performing for my parents dinner parties when i was supposed to be in bed mm -hmm. i would just show up with the boom box um but it wasn't and it was something i continued it was always something i loved but it wasn't something i felt comfortable saying i'm an actress and then i was in la and i would help my friends do like read their lines and create characters with their auditions and i love 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 doing that and eventually i had a friend call me out and say hey why, why aren't you doing this and i realized i was scared I was scared of being a struggling actress. Um, and eventually I got over that and I was like, you know what, he's right. I'm gonna give this a shot. Um, and then I started doing indie films and then this is uh, my first TV thing. So, yeah. By the awesome. way, there's no such thing as a not struggling actor. We all it's like are, we are all yeah. struggling all the time <laughs> with our emotions. With I think our insecurity. Also, LA, yeah, I know it's true, it doesn't go away because yeah. I definitely had like a breakdown halfway through shooting. Yeah. I was like, I they picked the wrong person. <laughs> and they're I'm like, but it's halfway through and I can't tell them. 
And my friend was like, you got to just keep going. And she's like, they've seen so many actresses for this role. Like, they did not pick the wrong person. I was like, OK. And then I, like, finished it. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks for those questions. That's a great. That's a great way to end this. But luckily, yeah. your cast. The show is going to premiere May sixth on Stars. I can't wait for that. Give it up one more time, Michelle and Melissa. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Thank you so much.